Well, good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Um, I hope this finds you all doing well. I just want to say welcome and thank you all for joining, joining us today. My name is Reese May. I'm the Chief Strategy and Innovation Officer for SBP. And we are thrilled to have you on the call today. Today, uh, I want to start by sharing something I'm really excited about, about SBP, something that has kept me with the organization for over eight years now, and that is our deep commitment to a principle called the Yoko 10, which is that if something works well, you have to share it. In the eight years I've been with the organization, this has been a top priority for our team. How can we spread the effectiveness of our work more widely? How can we teach others the lessons that we're learning the hard way through rebuilding communities after disasters? Instead of figuring out how we can corner the market, SBP has always been more concerned with how can we give away our trade secrets. In the people serving business, there are no trade secrets. What we want to do is prevent the number of people who need our assistance to begin with. So one of SBP's guiding principles has been how can we help people before and after disasters who will never meet? We're going to get into more of how SBP has been conducting this important work during the course of this call. I want to thank each of you for joining the call. Um, you all play an integral role in helping families who are at risk or have been impacted by recent disasters make a full and prompt recovery. Many of you have volunteered and donated to SBP over the years, and for this support, we thank you. As you know, SBP's mission is to shrink the time between disaster and recovery. Your interest, enthusiasm, support, and your presence on the call today is what makes this work possible. So I want to thank you all for choosing to invest in SBP and for joining us today to learn more about our important work. Joining me on the call today is Marley Maskill, who leads SBP's disaster partnerships and training activities. And I'm excited to hear her share more with you all about some of SBP's most interesting and impactful work. We also have Greg Lusheen, our National Director of Philanthropy, and Andy Stovlith, our Director of Communications, who are helping to run the call in the background. Before we get started, I do just have a few housekeeping items to go over. First, everyone on the call will be muted throughout the presentation. That said, we'll have a Q&A session at the end of the call. So if you have a question, please submit that using the chat feature at any time throughout the presentation. We'll also be recording uh, today's call just for everyone's information and so that my southern drawl can live on historically for future audiences. Finally, our culture is one of continuous improvement, and so I hope that if you all have thoughts or ideas about how SBP can help you, your business, your family, or more broadly in your community, um, that you'll follow up with us and let us know um, how we can do that. With that, we'll dive right in. So let me set the stage for today's call and say that SBP exists to reduce the time between disaster and recovery. That's our tagline, but really what this mission is about is preventing unnecessary suffering. We want to prevent survivors from passing their breaking point. After disasters, we've learned, we've seen all over the country that every person has a breaking point. And it's a little different for each person, but it's largely determined by the amount of time a recovery takes, how predictable that pathway to recovery is, and how reliably and efficiently our survivors are able to access the resources they need in order to recover. So to operationalize our mission of preventing folks from passing the breaking point and reducing the time between disaster and recovery, SBP focuses on five strategic interventions that are displayed on the slide here. Um, these aim to help communities prepare for and recover more quickly from disasters, and it operates at a variety of levels. As many of you know, SBP began as a rebuilding organization. We focused on rebuilding homes for families who couldn't afford, afford market rate contractors, and we focused on doing this more efficiently at every turn. Our partnership with Toyota helped us cut our building time nearly in half. We reduced construction time by 48% in the course of about a year and a half of working with Toyota. But as we start to look around the country, we knew that building simply wasn't enough. If we really wanted to reduce the time between disaster and recovery, you can look at the numbers and see. This year, uh, many of you joined the last of these calls with Thomas and Liz, we will rebuild hundreds of homes all across the country. We'll, we'll construct new affordable and resilient housing 
for folks who are housing insecure, and we're really, really proud of this work. It means the world for the hundreds of families who will receive these homes. At the same time, though, millions of Americans are going to be affected by disasters this year and every year. And so we knew that to prevent people from passing their breaking point, we needed to continue to meet the overwhelming need after each new disaster, while also reducing the number of people who would need our services to begin with. And we need to scale our ability to make impact when disasters inevitably occurred. Today, we're going to focus more on a couple of our interventions that help us increase that scale and reduce the number of folks who would need SBP's assistance through our share and prepare interventions. And I'd like to ask my colleague Marley to step in here and tell us a little more about these interventions. Thanks, Ray. For our SHARE intervention, we believe that if you do something well, you should share it. This is our core value, Yoka 10, that Reese mentioned. So we share knowledge and resources to raise the capacity and efficacy of other nonprofit rebuilding groups to increase both volume and production. For our PREPARE intervention, we believe that the best way to shrink the time between disaster and recovery is to reduce the need for recovery in the first place. To do this, we need to prepare individuals and communities to help proactively identify, prepare, and mitigate risks uh, to life, safety, property, and finances. In the next 25 minutes together, we're excited to share with you the why and how behind both of these interventions. So why share? What does it mean? What does SBP have to give away? I'll tell you that over the last few years, you don't need to read many newspapers to know that we've seen a pronounced increase in the total number of disasters, the severity of natural disasters, and we see them affecting more and more disparate parts of our country. We know well that SBP can't rebuild every home that's impacted by disaster, but we can teach others what we know. The, this can quickly empower other local and national organizations to benefit from the SBP from the lessons that SBP has learned the hard way over the years, and this allows for more rebuilding more quickly and more efficiently after disasters occur. This will happen for families that we'll never meet because they'll be able to get quick and efficient services from SBP partner organizations even when they're not able to receive assistance from SBP. Our commitment to Yoko 10 means that SBP is 100% open source. We've grown a lot over the last handful of years roughly 18% annually. We've learned a ton as we've opened operations in Missouri, New York, New Jersey, Texas, South Carolina, and other places. And we're deeply committed to sharing all of it. Our rebuilding model that's based on the Toyota production system, our management philosophy and performance management systems, our technology, recruitment, fundraising platforms, anything we can do to help replicate our success and drive greater efficiency and effectiveness across the recovery industry. For us, success is not building more houses than competitors. Success is that more houses are rebuilt more quickly. More efficient industry means that more families get home sooner. So what does this look like on the ground? We implement our SHARE intervention by providing training and educational tools for individuals, community leaders, and organizations to increase resilience ahead of disasters and navigate predictable paths to recovery when disasters occur. Pulling from best practices and lessons learned from the communities we've served, our trainings equip partners with operational knowledge and tools to grow impact when capacity is needed most. SVP's experience provides practical, actionable steps that learners can take to address real-world challenges commonly encountered when preparing for and responding after a disaster. This increases the impact and efficiency of our partners, which means that collectively we can get more people home faster. Since 2017, we have trained 250 nonprofits through our SHARE intervention. These trainings are primarily focused on our rebuilding model. As many of you may know, FTP has a one-roof model. Client services, volunteer recruitment, construction, funding, and scheduling are all performed by FTP. In our trainings, we share resources, best practices, tools, and strategies SVP employs across all of these areas, depending on the needs of our partners. A large focus of these trainings is on our lessons learned from implementing the Toyota production system. Establishing clear organizational goals, visualizing processes, and focusing on problem solving positions our partners to improve accountability and keep outcomes-focused work on track. In addition to these trainings, we share our AmeriCorps members in funding. 
By coupling knowledge with the people and funds to do more, we are able to position our partners to be leaders in disaster recovery for their communities. An example of one such partner is the Fuller Center. The Fuller Center established disaster recovery operations in Houston after Hurricane Harvey, focusing on clients in Galveston County, which was not served by the FDP Houston office. By partnering with the Fuller Center, we were able to increase rebuilding capacity in Galveston County without having to expand our service area. The Fuller Center participated in trainings focused on our TPS model, Salesforce, and data management. They were granted AmeriCorps members to help with volunteers and construction management and granted funding to offset the cost of their home rebuild. With this support, they have rebuilt 30 homes. Here's an example of one of the families that they were able to support. Mr. and Mrs. Baird lived in their home in Dickinson, Texas for four years prior to Hurricane Harvey. When the storm was heading their way, they went to their son's home to sh seek shelter. And when they returned to their home, they learned that they had flooded during the storm. When our partners at the Fuller Center first met the Bairds and saw their home, they noticed the home was very unsafe. The subflooring had been severely damaged and many areas were soft and uneven. Mr. Baird uses a cane due to a medical issue and our partners at the Fuller Center were greatly concerned that he could fall through the floor of his home at any time. After seeing the condition of the home, the Fuller Center immediately began the process to bring the Bairds back to a safe living condition. While the primary focus of the Fuller Center is on rebuilding gutted homes, as we get further from the disaster, there are more and more homes for which rebuilding is not economically feasible. The Baird's home is one such example. The house only flooded to the floor level, so the initial thought was that the only work needed would be the floor and substructure. But it quickly became apparent that the cost would exceed the value of the home. As you can see in the before pictures on the slide, the floor had serious issues as it was buckling over time. Due to the severity of the damage to the home, the Fuller Center decided the best approach was to tear down and start from scratch. The Fuller Center was able to find temporary housing for the family and layered funding from SVP with funding from other organizations to demolish the home and build, and build an entirely new one for the Bears. There are many others like the Bears all across Houston and in other impacted communities trying to rebuild their damaged homes, but with lack of, a, with lack of the correct resources. By supporting the growth of other rebuilding organizations around the country through our share intervention, we are able to get more people home faster. The Bairds are very grateful and excited to call this beautiful home theirs. In addition to the trainings we offer directly to partners like the Fuller Center, we also work with our partners to offer trainings directly to their clients, staff, and stakeholders immediately after disaster strikes. As you all know, the immediate days after a disaster are critical. The sooner resources and support can be directed to survivors, the quicker the community will be able to recover. These post-disaster trainings help survivors make informed decisions that will lead to a faster recovery. In these trainings, we cover navigating federal disaster assistance from FEMA and FDA, avoiding contractor fraud, mold remediation, and insurance post-disaster. In addition to the in-person trainings, we share post-disaster resource guides and e-learning modules, which provide a step-by-step -step guide on how to navigate through recovery after a disaster. Just in the last year, we've held these trainings in Panama City after Hurricane Michael, Paradise, California after the campfire, Arkansas after the Arkansas River flood, and New Orleans after Hurricane Barry. Our goal in sharing these trainings and resources is to equip the survivors to be the best advocates for their own recovery. Thanks so much, Marley. And so you can see there the importance, it's really force multiplication work by sharing SBP's knowledge and people and experience and resources. We believe that we can quickly add greater capacity and productivity capability to partners in any disaster impacted community. Marley talked a lot there about what SBP can share after disasters, but you know, I wanna transition us now to the prepare intervention. In the same way that we knew building wouldn't be enough, we also know that just responding isn't enough. Instead of coming to a community after it's been wrecked by a disaster, what could we do to get ahead of it? How could we prevent SBP, or excuse me, prevent people from needing SBP's assistance, um, you know, whenever disasters do occur? We know that increasing preparedness and resiliency on an individual level is a critical step in fortifying people against their breaking point. 
We also know that businesses, NGOs, government agencies have a steadfast responsibility to take care of their best asset, their people. And we believe that individual preparedness and resilience plans are an important part of any business continuity product. We believe that if folks can't get back to work quickly, communities can't get back to normal quickly. Economies can't recover. Housing stock cannot be rebuilt. And so we believe that it is important that every individual better understand and take specific steps to mitigate their risk. So in order to do this, SBP began creating a host of materials, trainings, checklists, downloadable guides, pamphlets with actionable steps that people can take to understand if they have the right insurance, document the valuable property that they own in their home, collect their documents in a way that can quickly be retrieved and used to demonstrate ownership of the property and policy terms and conditions for insurance after disasters occur. Marley can tell you a little more now about our resources and trainings that are focused on preparedness, um, but we think this too is perhaps the most important part of SBP's business. Yeah, as Reese mentioned, um, our resources and trainings focused on preparedness are offered to household businesses and nonprofit organizations. And the content of these trainings are based on the lessons we have learned through our recovery experience. And they provide practical guidance to address real world challenges commonly encountered by disaster survivors that we have seen in the field. For individuals, our trainings focus on risk identification, planning, important documents, insurance, and protecting their home and property. The trainings for businesses and nonprofits um, cover business continuity, insurance, and workforce preparedness. We offer these trainings directly to individuals um, and through train the trainers to, um, for our partners at no cost. And this equips them to share the information with their stakeholders. In support of their ongoing disaster resiliency program, we recently offer this training to our partner AARP at their Louisiana State office. This training was structured as a train the trainer for leaders of AARP affiliates across the state. By participating in the training, these affiliates can now ensure their members are better prepared. Our goal in offering these trainings is to cause behavior change in participants that increases preparedness and resiliency in measurable ways. For example, the participants of the AARP training are incorporating homeowner preparedness resources into their current member outreach programs and encouraging their members to take more preparedness steps in their homes. We also recently completed a train the trainer for members of the Puerto Rico Manufacturers Association so they could bring back the best practices to their team members. One participant of the training shared, the preparedness information will be very helpful for me, my family, and the employees with whom we are going to share the information in order to be prepared for a disaster. Another participant added, our goal is to share the material with the entire organization, creating sessions and working hand in hand with the HR department to accomplish our goals. Thanks, Marley. Really exciting stuff. So as we rolled these trainings out, and you can see from Marley's slide, we've reached more than 6,000 individuals over the last three years as we've been delivering these trainings. But we realize this, again, pales in comparison to the total amount of need out there, the total amount of individuals who are exposed to risk. And so as we learned that the trainings were valuable by this kind of validating feedback that we were receiving and, and watching the actions that uh, trainees were taking, we realized we need to figure out how we can reach more people, not necessarily assembled at a room at a time that works for 20 or 30 people, but something that works for them on their time and on their terms. And so just over the last 12 months, we've worked to create an e-learning platform and a whole bunch of e-learning modules that condense much of SVP's preparedness and recovery training materials into 10 to 15 minute uh, online, on-demand training modules that are accessible across a variety of platforms and to a variety of audiences. We design these trainings in a way that they can live inside the learning management systems of major corporations, businesses, non-governmental organizations, uh, agencies of government, and more. Uh, the goal here being that any organization can use this information to communicate messages of resilience and uh, provide actions that uh, help prepare workforces and individual colleagues in advance of disaster. With SBP's e-learning materials, our goal is to prevent millions of Americans from suffering in the way that we see thousands suffer after disasters 
each year. The topics of our e-learning materials currently include how to know if you need flood insurance and get it, how to navigate federal assistance after disasters, uh, how to avoid contractor fraud and mold remediation scams, and if you're sensing a theme here, it's that SBP is aiming its educational material precisely at the ways in which disaster survivors became SBP clients to begin with. They were under or uninsured. They didn't understand their risk exposure and so had not prepared for it. Still more were not able to navigate to the federal assistance that they needed in order to make a full recovery because of the complex and you know, tangle of agencies that are involved uh, in, in applying for post-disaster aid. Still more received assistance that would have helped them get home but were quickly taken advantage of by bad actors who routinely enter disaster impacted communities and rip people off through contractor fraud and mold remediation scams. Um, certainly, SBP is working on even more preparedness materials to help folks conduct home inventories and more deeply understand ways that they can get prepared for perils even beyond hurricane tornado. So now is our call to action. E-learning is one of the most exciting things that SBP has developed in the last few years, and it is in service to that greater mission of both preparing communities in advance of disasters and sharing our resources with communities that are at risk and recently impacted. I'd like to add all, or I'd like to ask all of you uh, to visit our website if you haven't already and take the modules for yourself, see what you think, and please do give us feedback. This will help you get yourself prepared. And more broadly, I'd ask that you share this with your friends and with your neighbors, with your church softball team, with your employer, if you see fit. We know that these messages are important and that the more folks who receive them, the fewer will need SBP or any rebuilding assistance because folks are prepared and resilient in advance of disasters. I'd ask that to stay updated on SBP's work, you please follow us on social media. All of our handles are listed here on the right side of the page. Um, and I'll now, uh, sort of step out of the way here and ask Greg to jump in and present any questions that were submitted in the course of the presentation. Thank you, Reese. Yeah, so I do have just a couple questions. The first one was, um, how do you identify nonprofit groups that SBP can partner with when responding to a community impacted by disaster? Great question. So SBP has some Blue Sky partners um, with whom Marley is in regular touch. There are big organizations that are federated and have local chapters, if you think of Habitat for Humanity or Rebuilding Together. Inevitably, on the ground in disaster-impacted communities, there are groundswell organizations who capture the spirit of a neighborhood or a community and form quickly in order to start serving needs. Through SBP's national network of funding and philanthropic partners, other national builders and nonprofit organizations, um, and our direct work deploying AmeriCorps teams to disaster impacted areas, we're usually able to get a pretty high level, medium level, and on the ground level view of the organizations that are active and sort of what actions and services they're providing to local communities. And from there, we start to meet with leadership at these organizations and explore what may be possible. Thanks, Reese. Uh, another question that just came through is, how would someone get trained in the Toyota production system? Like what's the process? Is there someone they can contact? Um, just to bring that to either their nonprofit or to another organization. That's a, a great question. Marley, do you want to take that one? Sure. You can just email me. Um, Greg, I, if we can share my contact information in the follow-up email, um, is that possible? Yeah, I can definitely do that. And Otherwise, I can also chat it. Oh, sure, that would be great. Um, if anybody is interested who's on this call, um, they can email me. We can um, set up a call and touch base of what you're looking for and see how we can help. Um, feel free to also share, share my contact information with any of your um, community members or stakeholders that you feel could benefit as well. I just shared Marley's um, email via the Gchat. Um, and I'll also send it in the follow-up email as well. Um, let's see, the next question um, was if somebody's company was interested in getting involved, um, would they contact one of you? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Ruth. They can email me as well. Um, and if I'm not the right contact person for what they're looking for, I can make that connection within SBP. All right, that sounds good. And then another question that just came through was, um, when you spoke about the SHARE intervention and partnering um, with different nonprofits and granting them dollars, um, what are your sources of funding to, to do this work? Another really great question. So it varies. Um, occasionally, businesses and corporate groups will ask SBP to help advise them on how best to serve um, clients who work in their networks and they are, or who work for their company and they will sometimes uh, enlist SBP to help uh, with a granting progress or process internally. By and large, the way that we grant uh, monies to other organizations, though, comes through partnerships with big charitable foundations, local community foundations, um, individual private donors um, who make this a priority. You know, in Texas, uh, we were fortunate to meet J.J. Uh, Watt pretty early on after the disaster, and uh, I explained, you know, SBP's view of the world after disaster, noting that housing, uh, it, I think, is the trickiest, post-disaster housing in America, I think, is the trickiest problem I've seen since the porousness of the Syrian border in 2005. And so we encouraged J.J. to think about doing something big in housing, um, and, and what he came back to us was, I want to see what you can help other organizations do. And so we've been fortunate over the last couple of years to grant two or three million dollars worth of uh, J.J. Watt's money to a host of nonprofit organizations in and around the Harvey impacted area to, to increase their capacity. Another funder of note um, has been SIGGO, has allowed um, SBP to share best, practice, best practices between um, mayors, political leaders in disaster impacted communities. Um, and I'd also say the Bob Woodruff Foundation has just recently made an investment in SBP uh, to work with partner organizations to rebuild homes for veterans um, who were impacted or displaced by Hurricane Harvey. So, you know, there are a few uh, big headline funders, uh, but there's no wrong way to get involved in this work. And um, certainly folks can donate to SBP with, you know, share as, as their intention. Um, but I think we're always looking for new and interesting ways, so, so keep those coming. Perfect. I just have one last question before we wrap this up. And it is, in addition to word of mouth and the SBP website, what is SBP's strategy to push the resilience training out to corporations and agencies? Another really great question, Greg. So our, our strategy is really, we start with what I would call frontline civilians. So there are, I guess there's two, two places to start. One is uh, companies and organizations with whom SBP has a relationship and is deeply familiar. So they're you know, Zurich, Farmers, uh, Sitgo, others, Entergy, Hillcorp, uh, groups that have worked with us, uh, volunteered with us, understand the value we're trying to add. They get it. They're implementing it in their systems. Um, in terms of prioritization, we look to communities, what I would call frontline employees. So uh, major utilities, uh, hospital employees, dialysis clinics, folks for whom uh, it is crazy important. Uh, that employees be able to get back and turn the lights on and get the business up and running soon. Without a grid, uh, there is no rebuilding. Without hospitals, um, dialysis clinics, et cetera, folks can, can pass away in wait. And so we know that preparedness and being able to bounce back quickly is particularly important for those communities. And then from there, you know, we're working with some of our major insurance partners who take a look at risk and resiliency for businesses all around the country all of the time. It's you know, the reason that they exist. And so we're getting some strong um, references and geo suggestions from our partners at Zurich and Farmers about clients and customers and ways in, in which SBP may want to focus its efforts in areas that are particularly um, prone or at risk. I realize that's a, a bit of a broad answer, but represents um, sort of the three strategic viewpoints. I hope that was helpful. I think that was great. Thanks, Ree. So that actually concludes all the questions. Um, and also um, wraps up the call. So I just want to thank everyone again for joining us today. Um, and please, once you log out of this webinar, um, you'll be sent a survey. The only way that we can get better is by having you all tell us what we're doing well and what we're not doing well. Um, it's a very short survey, so please take a few minutes to share your feedback. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>